attended a seminar for prospective students to give us a taste of what a typical class at Rhodes would look like. So there was about 20 of us who went and we showed up, we sat in a big circle and then the professor led us in a group meditation to sort of start off the class. Then he broached the topic of the day, which was love languages. Some of you may have heard of the five love languages before. They were originally discussed in a book written by Gary Chapman, and they talk about the different ways that people show and understand love. Perfect topic for me. I love talking about love and relationships. First we learned what the five love languages are, then we each did a test to find out what our predominant love language is, then we discussed our results as a group. So what are the five love languages? Number one, words of affirmation. This is for people who love to hear, I love you, this is how much you mean to me, and just constant verbal confirmation of love and affection. Number two, Quality time. This is for those people who really appreciate someone's undivided attention. My boyfriend, 100%. Number three, receiving gifts. Now this is not meant to be materialistic. This is meant to be those people who really appreciate love and thoughtfulness going into a gift that they get from some of their loved ones. Number four, of service. So taking up the trash, taking the kids to ballet or soccer, making dinner. And number five is physical touch. Now this is not just for the sexy times, although that is a little bit what this is about, but it is also for those people who really appreciate holding hands and being very cuddly and kisses and hugs, hello, goodbye, good night everything like that. So my number one is physical touch and when we got discussing it in a group the professor really invited me to dive into that and figure out why that was so important to me and I discovered that my family is a very cuddly family. We always have been. To this day if I watched a movie with my sisters I would likely cuddle with them on the couch. This is how I learned love as a child so it is no surprise that this is how I now look for love as an adult. The professor said that that's quite common, but also the other thing that is common is to see the complete opposite of that, whereby if you don't see one particular expression of love as a child, you, you really look to compensate for that as, a, as an adult. So I've attached a link below to Mr. Chapman's website so you can go there and find out what your predominant love language is. However, this information is not to be used so that we go to our partners or our future partners and say, okay, hey, this is how I need to see love from you. I need you to take out the trash every day or else, or else you don't love me. It is about understanding that there are many different ways to show and receive love. And so perhaps if there's someone who's very close to you that you are not feeling loved by, look to see if they are speaking a different love language. Thank you for joining me today for a little lesson with a touch of insight and I will see you all next week.